Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ongoing Mastery, presenting and speaking the podcast. And today, the interview. But unlike previous ones, we're not interviewing a guest. I'm interviewing Kelly. So Kelly, tell me Hi. a story. What did you do? Well, I went to the Moth Story Slam a couple of weeks ago. It was a terrific evening. It was so fun, so exciting. I left bubbling and just bouncing, even after a long day, teaching on my feet, all of that. Even though I went after work, it was still great. All right. So for people not in the area, what is the moth? So the moth is, I'm not sure exactly who produces it, but it airs on National Public Radio. It is a live storytelling program, and they've got different ways that they do that. But Story Slam is one of their main things. Story Slam's twice a month, cities all around the country. It is a national program. And so every two weeks, there's a cycle of an, an announced topic. And so cities all across the country hear stories on the same topic. And I'm sure they get sort of collected up and turned into the national moth. But the local Story Slam, you come in. If you have prepared a five minute story on the topic of the evening, you put your name in a bag. There are 10 storytelling slots and Ooh. the evening's host pulls, literally pulls names out of the bag randomly. Our evening had 21 people. So only half of them got to tell stories. You tell your story. There yep. are teams of judges out in the audience. The producer of the show, I don't know how exactly, but makes teams of judges ahead of time. Okay. So while the teams are deciding their scores, the host has a separate bag of other mini prompts. So mm -hmm. the theme that went was juggle and the mini prompt was tell us about a time you did a balancing act. So mm -hmm. people in the audience fill out these little mini prompts and while the judges are compiling their score, the host pulls out of the bag and reads, you know, two, three, four sentence mini story, reads a couple of those while the judges are compiling their scores to you know, fill the time, give the host something to react to, to riff on, and so on. Okay, so somebody who isn't, somebody who the idea of going up on stage and telling a story, they're like, I'd rather die would still have a good time going because they could see it, yeah. they could enjoy it, and they could fill out the mini prompt and have the person up on stage go, Kirsten from Auburn, her answer is blah, 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 blah. That sort of thing. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. You know, maybe sort of dip your toe in the water. If you have, say, a favorite story that you tell with friends, Maybe you put the three sentence version of that on the prompt and see what kind of reaction it gets. You know, maybe a little bit of audience testing, building up some courage before deciding you've got a five minute story and put your name in the big bag. Nice, nice. And I, as an instructional yeah. designer, I really like the cleverness of keeping the audience engaged by having something that they've participated in. So that's, I like that. Yeah. That's really good production yeah. design. So you had, did you prep a story or did you go to watch? I went to watch. Uh, we, You and I, of course, had been to the Grand Slam, which was sort of the finals of the season. This is one of the lead up pieces, but I'd never been to one. I had no idea how many people would be attending. If there's any kind of go, go, go up there kind of pressure. No, there is not. But I Good. definitely was not planning to put myself in the spotlight until I had at least some little understanding of how the evening works. So the people who tend to do it, do they, do they, for your first time going, um, I, did they seem like they were generally people who were storytellers or did it seem like a mix of people who were storytellers and people who were like, oh, I'll give it a shot, but oh my God, I want to die. I think it was a mix Okay. The stories were all really good. They get judged on a scale of one to 10. And I don't know if there's some kind of guidance that the teams get for how they're assessing this. 
but all of the stories were at least, I think maybe 7.8 was the lowest score. So three teams of judges, 10 stories, 30 scores, maybe 7.8 was the lowest once. Okay. So, so there were well-told stories. So, so if somebody is interested in expanding their ongoing mastery of their presenting and speaking skills, but they don't consider themselves a storyteller, this is still the kind of thing that they might find satisfaction in doing and they might find valuable. Oh, for sure. For sure. Okay. At least one of the people up on stage, uh, actually, I think there were two of them, happened to be lawyers, right? They're not storytellers by profession. They have entirely other jobs, but this is a creative thing that they do. Okay. Uh, no one who came to the stage that I can remember explicitly identified themselves as a storyteller or other kind of performing art person. So I think it's primarily skilled amateurs. I don't think many people come up for the very first time ever, never having been the center of a circle of friends telling a story at a bar. Right. Okay. I don't think you can go directly from Wallflower to the stage. Okay. But if you're the kind of person who likes to tell stories with your friends, this might be the next thing you might think about doing to tell those stories in front of people you don't know. And if you are an introvert who wants to be someone who is more the tell stories and people listen to you, you could go and watch some and get a sense of it. Absolutely fantastic yeah. so you get a sense of what makes yeah uh just sorry uh you get a sense <laughs> of what makes for like a good story <laughs> like what the what the arc is of a good story how long five minutes is how much mm. information you can get into five minutes and they really are pretty strict they have a, a chime that indicates you're hitting about to hit the mark and then a different one that is really you have to wrap it up now but most of the time you don't even get that far so it is not a long, involved, super complicated okay. process. So if you're someone who's interested in adding storytelling and being less introverted, I think it's a great experience to go see how other people do it and sort of demystify some of the sense of it's such a big production, it's so involved, it's so intricate. It doesn't have to be. It really doesn't. So... As somebody who teaches for a living, and especially as somebody who teaches um, analysis and literature and reading and, and being able to pull through lines out of content, when you were watching this, did you get a sense of, did you get a sense of how, how people originate like how they created their stories do you think that these were stories that were ones they've been telling for to their friends for 100 years or did some of them seem like ones that they were like okay i really want to learn this skill and i'm going to put something together did it feel like hanging around in a kitchen did it feel more like going to a bar and trying to pick somebody up on speed dating like what was the energy <laughs> like um the energy was more kitchen than bar speed dating okay it was comfortable it was relaxed it was the way that i don't know about you but any party i end up at most people end up in the kitchen even if the food is somewhere else <laughs> right um you have to make a sort of concerted effort to get people out of the kitchen to other parts of the the house so it had that kind of comfortable we're just hanging out here entertaining each other vibe to it it did sound like at least a couple of the stories are familiar favorites to the storyteller with enough adjustment to fit the theme of the night okay so cool i didn't get a huge sense maybe one or two stories felt like oh the theme of juggle oh i could talk about this let me figure out how to tell it for this particular story slam event Mm -hmm. And I hope I get picked. Okay. Right? A couple of them felt crafted to the theme, not originally made up out of nothing, but not a favorite story to tell okay. and you know, put together for the theme. But several others, definitely you could, you could kind of feel that they were a flexible enough story 
that the theme of love or the theme of unexpected consequences or the theme of juggle might all fit that same one story. So the reason why I ask is because I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of any of our listeners that find the idea of this to be really daunting or really scary or, oh, but but I wouldn't even know where to begin. So that's why I'm trying to pull out kind of what the experience is because yeah, it sounds like that this would be a really, especially if it's all over, it's in all the cities, uh, all the major cities, would be a really great experience for somebody who wants to expand their presenting and speaking skills to go into a storytelling event. <clears throat> Sorry, rough throat today. And give it a shot and not necessarily be in that, you know, because like if it was a poetry slam, I would think that would be for me a little bit more of, oh, I'm not up for that. But an open mm. storytelling might be a little less intimidating. I would agree with that. Uh, poetry slams for me have a much bigger performance quality, vocal inflection and movement quality to it that the story slam has less of. It's definitely a performance. They don't just stand there woodenly at the microphone, but it is less, it is less amped up. Hmm. I would say it's definitely more casual, more comfortable. As you and I know from a hobby that we participate in, I actually was thinking if I were to go up and tell a story, I might have to start it with, no shit, there I was. <laughs> right? And, and sort of the... <laughs> Right. Yep. Like the familiar beat of, hey, 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 I got to tell you this thing. And, and for and the not people. Quite so much of. Uh, yeah. Sorry. And not quite so much of. Yeah. And not quite so much of, I shall now perform. <laughs> right. So for people, <clears throat> again, wow, all of a sudden, frog in my throat. Well done. For the people listening. Um, <laughs> so Kelly and I knew each other met through an organization called the SCA, which is the Society for Creative Anachronism or Creatively Living in the Past. And she's an active member and I was an active member for a really long time. And the traditional war story of the SCA is always a different story, but it always starts with, no shit, there we were, or no shit, there I was. And it's always yeah. this, you know, big uh, drink in your hand, sitting around a campfire kind of experience. So I love the idea of bringing that energy to the stage and, and I, the, you know, the possibility of it because people who pretend it's the middle ages on weekends have a bit of a theatrical streak, even when they think they don't Kelly, I'm looking at you. Yes. Yes, you are. I, <laughs> I love how you're like, you. I'm not, I'm not a really theatrical person. I'm like, you're a Scadian. Uh, sorry, busted. Plus you're a literature professor busted twice. So this sounds like this was a really good evening. And honestly, I expected you to come back and be happy with it. But you told me prior to this call that you're thinking of actually doing one, which is a surprise to me. Yeah. I don't know exactly if it might be the next one, but also a surprise to myself. Mm. I could see myself giving it a try. Nice. Right. The people who told the stories were all ages, all demographics of all kinds. We had someone who explicitly identified her religious cultural background. We had people who identified particular illnesses that ended up being part of the story. Right. It is not just the bright, pretty, shiny things who get up and get to be the center of attention. Right. It was really, it was really egalitarian in that way. And I really enjoyed that energy about it. Awesome. And and I, what I love about this is kind of giving a sense of it for people who want to be able to branch out because storytelling is something that it's tricky. I mean, there's there's different yeah. ways of doing it. Like I've, I, like many, many people have written some truly mediocre fan fiction and I've had friends read it and they were really kind. But I wouldn't necessarily go and perform that on stage. <laughs> so in this case, it would be right. more of a performance idea rather than, you know, like my favorite TV show character suddenly is able to fly um, or something like that. So yeah. in, in the case of 
for you as an instructor and you as someone who who guides people through the journey of discovery as a literature professor, do you think that if someone is looking to add storytelling in as a skill set, that watching stories and listening to audiobooks and doing stuff like this is is a good kind of branching into the open world? And is there anything specific that you th would suggest that they try as like a, a challenge for themselves, like some homework to give them? Okay. I think first question first. Yes. I think if you're looking to add storytelling to your skill set, I would say as often as possible, being part of a live audience. And if you can't do that, listening to something recorded with a live audience because that audience interaction matters so much the mm -hmm. energy of the space really contributes to the experience in an intangible way that a book just audio recorded in a studio is different if you don't have access to that see if you can listen to podcasts or audiobooks that are recorded theatrically Mm -hmm. For example, we, my family and I are listening to a podcast, uh, no, excuse, of an audio book of a series and it's based on a video game character. The whole book series is this character trying to get through the levels of the game. Earth's been invaded by aliens. It's a whole thing. <laughs> but there are sound effects. There are different voices. There's all kinds of things. It's definitely not just one voice talking to a microphone. Right. So the more that you can listen to stories told with theatricality to understand pacing, to hear mm. the timing beats, to hear how to build suspense. If you've got an audience, you can hear what kinds of things are funny, maybe what kinds of things really bring down a room, how to make a funny cancer joke, for example, which you might not think is possible. And yet there were some funny cancer jokes told at the night I was there. Okay. So all of those sorts of, yeah. I wouldn't right? have called that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, um, I'm literally making a face right tell now. Tell funny uh, cancer jokes. Funny cancer jokes. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, that one I definitely wouldn't have called. And I will say that I'm going to side myself specific homework from the, this episode, which is you handled it graciously. Thank you. Which is, I shouldn't ask compound questions. <laughs> I asked you three <laughs> questions in one and you rolled with it. You're like, I'll start with the first one. And I'm like, oh, damn, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so no, homework no, to me, one at a time. Well, and I would say homework is looking for those kinds of resources and having a sense of what it is you're trying to learn and how listening to an audiobook or a podcast might target those things. So look for things that are recorded in front of a studio audience. I'm a huge fan of NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Mm, and yeah. this is a side note, but I think it's related. During the pandemic, when they could not record in front of a studio audience, the first few pandemic episodes had no laughter and they Oof. were excruciating. And so the yeah. production team ended up adding in laughter from previously recorded shows because the show just did not work without some kind of audience response. Yeah. And so homework would be actively look for those kinds of resources. And the one other thing I would say about the moth for clarity is that these are stories about the teller's own life that are true as the teller understands them to be. So partly mm. why it's possible to make a funny cancer joke is that the teller is making it about themselves or Got about it. their own direct experience, right? These are not stories that you have made up, say, like fan fiction with mm -hmm. a set of material that you're not personally involved in the experience. Yes, because uh, like my mother survived cancer, your husband and you have survived cancer. I have not had that experience. Right. I would not tell that joke. <laughs> That is not mine Ew. to tell. However, I could totally see my mother doing it. 100%. Oh. I could. Yeah. And your mother would be so dry 
people wouldn't quite be sure if it was a joke. Yeah, they would actually be afraid until we cracked up and then they'd be like, it's okay to laugh. Is it really okay? Yeah. So perfect. All right. So yeah. thank you for your feedback and your thoughts and I, and the homework. I We were actually going to go further than this and talk about Kristen Spencer, who came back on and talked about a previous podcast, but we didn't have time. So for those of you <laughs> listening, check out our other episodes because we have Laura, uh, who Laura Packer, who is a fantastic storyteller. And then we had Kristen Spencer, who is a storytelling friend of ours, who came back on and gave her feedback on Laura and actually brought one of Laura's books and read me quotes from Laura's book, which was awesome. Yeah, uh, so we're talking so about storytelling as a concept, as a way of trying to bring that as an ongoing mastery practice. So give yeah. your feedback, make comments, send us notes. Uh, tell us what you think. And if you show up at a moth and you're in Massachusetts, look for us in the audience and come say hi. And we'll see you next and time. Yep. Don't we have a LinkedIn group, Kirsten? We do have a LinkedIn group. We have the ongoing mastery presenting and speaking LinkedIn group in which we are putting in things like this. And we should actually uh, throw up another poll pretty soon for... Yeah what kind of, you know, what kind of event people might want to see if we do an online, like storytelling retrospective or, or workshop or something. So Neat. put something in there. So All go right. check it out and we will see you next time. Thanks for coming. Cheers.